Hi, it's Steve from Part Select. Today we're going to show you how to change an evaporator fan motor grommet on your refrigerator. It's a really easy job. All you're going to need is a pair of needle nose pliers, a Phillips screwdriver, and a small flat blade screwdriver, and a quarter and five sixteenths inch nut driver. Let me show you how we do it. Now before we begin this repair, the first thing that we'll need to do is to pull the refrigerator out and disconnect the power. Simply pull the plug from the receptacle. Now our first step will be to open the freezer door, remove any items that are in the freezer, including on the ice cube tray. And then we're going to remove that holder for the ice cube trays. And to remove it, we'll need to lift it up enough, push it fully to the left to insert the two pins on the end of that shelf as far in as it'll go. And then we're going to bend it slightly to disengage it from a couple of T-pins on the top. Now we'll want to make sure that that's warm enough that it will bend easily. If it's frozen, you may run the risk of breaking it. So simply push it over far enough to clear those pins. And then you can lift it out and we'll set that aside. Next, we're going to remove two Phillips screws that hold the evaporator fan cover in place. And we can lift up on that fan cover and then tilt it away at the top. Gently lift it off of the styrofoam block that is beneath it. We'll set that aside. Next, we're going to remove two Phillips screws from the front of the freezer floor. These screws are slightly longer than the two that held the evaporator fan cover in, just so you can distinguish between them. Now we'll get hold of a corner of that floor and tilt it up on the front. We need to disengage some hooks that fasten to the back of the evaporator cover slide that out, set it aside. There's the four hooks that hook into the back of the evaporator cover. Now we're going to remove this styrofoam block. And take caution when pulling that up out of there. It just fits into the floor of the freezer as a friction fit. We'll set that aside. We'll now remove two Phillips screws from the upper corners. And then two quarter inch hex head screws that secure the evaporator cover to the fan motor bracket. Now you can lift that evaporator cover out of the way and set that aside. Now with the evaporator cover off, we have access to the components. So our next step will be to disconnect the fan motor, depress the two locking tabs on the side of the wire connector, and disengage that. And with our needle nose pliers, we're going to remove the ground wire from the end of the evaporator mounting bracket. And then we'll remove two Phillips screws that hold that bracket to the back wall. You need to support that motor assembly when you're taking the last screw out. And now we can take the assembly and set it on a suitable work surface and complete our repair. Now that we have the motor assembly on a suitable work surface, our next step will be to remove the fan blade and the little retaining clamp. 
Now, if the blade will not pull easily off of the shaft, you may need to remove that little retaining clamp first and just with a flat blade screwdriver, just catch the edge of it and gently pry it off of the fan blade. Most cases, the blade and that clamp will come off as one piece. Again, if it's a little snug, just take a pair of pliers and go in underneath the center of the hub of that fan blade and gently pry it off the motor shaft. Now, once you have that removed, you have easier access to the 5 16 hex head screws on either side of that motor. Remove those. You can actually just remove one and loosen the other one enough that the motor will slide freely in there. But for clarification purposes here, we're going to remove it completely. As well as the ground wire. Then we'll lift the front motor bracket off. That exposes one of the grommets. Simply press it out of the bracket and install a new one on the back side and it's ready to reassemble. You should also check the rear one. Again, that just pops out. and the new one would slide into place. Then we're simply going to set the motor back in position with the button on the back of the motor fitting it into that center hole in the grommet. We'll set the front motor bracket in place. And then we'll replace the mounting screws. Make sure they're tight. And if you've removed the clamp from the fan blade, we should put that back on first. It's a little tight, so just catch it over one third of that center hub on the fan blade. And then with a pair of needle nose pliers, just expand it enough to slide over the remainder. And then make sure that it's pressed firmly onto the hub of that fan blade so that it bottoms out on the little shoulder on the bottom. Next, we'll slide that onto the motor shaft. And we want to leave about a quarter to 5 16 of an inch of the shaft protruding from the hub of that blade. And now we're ready to reinstall the assembly. Now, to reinstall the motor assembly, we'll take one of those Phillips screws and have that ready. We'll put one of the mounting screws in place. Install the other one. Make sure that when you mount that that you don't pinch the wire that goes to the defrost thermostat. We'll next connect the harness to the motor. Make sure the locking tabs engage. And reinstall the ground wire to the terminal on the mounting bracket. Next, we'll take the evaporator cover, slide that into position, and we'll secure it with the two quarter inch hex head screws that hold it to the motor bracket. Place the two screws in the upper corners. And 
Next, we'll reinstall the styrofoam block. And again, take caution when inserting that into the opening. Now we can put the freezer floor back in. Make sure those four tabs engage the evaporator cover. They tuck in behind the cover and then the lip of the floor will be across the front. And we'll put the two longer Phillips screws into the front of the freezer floor. And we'll install the fan cover. Slide that down over the styrofoam block. Lift it up enough to engage the two hooks at the top of that cover. They hook it into the evaporator cover. Slide it down into place, make sure it's engaged at the top. The two screws for the tabs fit into the freezer floor. We'll secure those with the two remaining screws. shelf in for the ice cube trays. These two pins need to go into the upper portion of that slotted hole so that it allows the shelf to go tight up against the wall. And we will hook the two slots on the top into the T-pins. And we will pull those two pins out and set them down in the bottom of those slotted holes. Now we're ready to load the freezer back up. Plug the refrigerator in and our repair is complete. Told you it was an easy job. Thanks for watching and good luck with your repair.